Hello aspiring actuaries, my name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel. My strange little corner of the internet where I talk to you about my actuarial journey and try to help guide you along your actuarial journey too. Are you trying to decide what kind of actuary to become? You might have heard about life actuaries or pension actuaries or property and casualty actuaries or reserving actuaries and pricing actuaries and reinsurance actuaries and all different kinds of actuaries and what does an actuary even do? I've been working almost nine years as an actuary and five months ago I switched into a property and casualty reserving role. So today I thought I'd tell you all about the tasks that I actually work on as a reserving actuary now that I'm doing it every single day. But first a little context about me so you understand the background that I'm bringing in with me to this beginner role. My beginner tasks as a reserving actuary are not going to be the same as an entry level beginner just because I am coming in with nine years of reserving experience. I'm also coming in as a fellow of the Casualty Actuarial Society and a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, which means that I've learned all of the different reserving techniques on my exams, but I haven't necessarily used it in my day-to-day -day work. I have done reserve reviews as part of our indication processes when I was working in pricing, but reviewing reserves is not necessarily the same as being a reserving actuary and really getting your hands dirty. I came into this role with a love of coding and SAS which I'll talk about a little bit more later, but is not generally a skill set that is needed in a reserving role. I also came in with a personal lines pricing background and I'm working in specialty lines reserving. So I'm unfamiliar with the lines of business. I am familiar with the reserving techniques, but I don't understand the lines that I'm looking for. And so there's a lot of learning on my part that needs to be done about what goes on in those lines of business. Because as an actuary, you can't just look at the data and say, well, the data says this, so the data says this. Context is super important. Understanding what's going on, understanding the claims practices, understanding the underwriting practices, super important to be able to set the reserves at the right level. Quickly, what are reserves and why are reserves important? I always say this, but the way that insurance works is First, we sell the product, then some people may or may not have a claim. We don't know how much it's going to be. We don't know who's going to have the claim. So we sell the product before the expenses are known. As an insurance company, we can't just wait until the expenses are accrued before we start booking them on our balance sheets. If we sell a billion dollars worth of premium, but the claims only come three years later, we can't just say we're a billion dollars profitable this year. That's where the reserving actuaries come in. We try to estimate the ultimate value of these future losses. We are estimating the financial liabilities of this company. It's really important because it determines how profitable the company seems. It determines the share price of the company. It determines how regulators view the company. It determines the pricing strategy. If we set reserves too high, they might think, uh oh, we need to start raising our prices because it's just really, we're not being profitable. If we set them too low, we might lower the prices incorrectly. It will impact things like reinsurance costs. It will impact the financial viability of the insurance company because we need to know how much liability we have on our balance sheet, how much capital we need to maintain on our balance sheet such that we can support these future claims that will be coming in. So the first task that I am responsible for is picking the assumptions that go into our reserving models. There are three main reserving techniques or reserving models that we use. The first one is the chain ladder method or the loss development method. I made a whole video on this. It's my best performing YouTube video, I would say. I get so much praise on it, which is very lovely. But the general idea is you look at the claims that have already come in, you determine how you think they're gonna develop over time, and so your assumptions for that are really these development factors. If I've already got a million dollars that came in, do we think that million is gonna turn into two million? Do we think that million is gonna turn into six million? So that's one of the assumptions that we need to pick is those loss development factors. On the flip side, another reserving technique that we use is called the expected loss ratio method. This one doesn't look at the losses that have come in at all. We don't know anything about the claims. This one is saying, what policies did I sell and how much of that policy do I expect to go to losses? So if I sold $100 million worth of premium and I say, I think 60% of that is gonna go to losses, then my ultimate loss is gonna be 60% times $100 million or $60 million. In that reserving technique, it's really the 
picking that expected loss ratio, that 60%, that is the reserving technique of where do we set that a priori assumption. A third technique that we'll use is called the bornhuter ferguson method. And this is kind of a weighted average between those two, where it considers both losses that have already come in and it considers the premium or the policies that we've sold in that year. And it weights them depending on how old the policy is. For our reserving models, every model has inputs and assumptions and outputs. So the inputs are things like the premiums or the losses that are incurred. The outputs are gonna be these final reserve levels that we're setting. And some of the assumptions that we're responsible for picking are these loss development factors, these expected loss ratios, and different weights between different methods because trying different methods out and then finding the right balance between them is also part of the game. The next thing that I'm responsible for is quantifying the impact of changing assumptions. Actuaries love a sensitivity test. What happens if I tweak it this way? What happens if I tweak it that way? Understanding what is going to happen to our financial financial results and quantifying that is part of the game. So taking our inputs, putting in our old assumptions, putting in our new assumptions, looking at the differences, presenting those changes to upper management and saying, this is what I'm changing. This is the impact of those change. This is why I justify those changes. At my company, and it might be different at other companies, we reserve on a quarterly basis. So some bigger lines of business might be reviewed every single quarter where we'll look at each assumption for every line of business. For the specialty lines, a lot of them are very teeny tiny. And because there's a lot of noise in them, there isn't a ton of value in looking at every line every quarter. So what we do on my team is every line will get reviewed at least annually, and then some of the bigger lines might get reviewed more often. But with this quarterly changes in assumption, one of the things that we have to do is we have to make sure that the right assumptions are booked in the system. Like I mentioned before, the reserve levels impact a lot of things in the company. It impacts the financial viability of the company. It impacts how the company is perceived by regulators, by reinsurers, by shareholders, by upper management, by everyone. And so we need to make sure that when we're changing assumptions, those right reserves are put in the system. And so one of the tasks that I do, we call it booking. It's making sure that the right assumptions are booked in the system such that the system can calculate the right reserve levels. Make sure that everything flows through to the financial systems and everything is beautiful. There are lots of people working on booking. I'm responsible for reviewing my lines of business and making sure that the right assumptions are in for my lines of business. This is work that I'll do on a monthly basis with larger reviews happening on a quarterly basis when more of the assumptions are changing. Often reserving is thought of as a place where actuaries don't really need to use a lot of coding. There are people in the department who are responsible for the data, but your reserving actuaries generally receive the data already in Excel or we use Rescue, a reserving software where it's already set up in triangles. Again, I have a video all about actuarial triangles and reserving, so feel free to watch that. So you already get the data in this pre-aggregated form where you can play with it and see what's going on. You'll probably have some sort of diagnostic charts to be able to look at trends and analyze what's going on, but you won't have to write code to analyze your claim by claim data. I mentioned earlier that I love coding in SAS, so I have been trying to ease my way in and sort of keep a foot in that data pool, in that data area, in that database -y little space. And I have been just learning about the reserving databases, trying to figure it out, trying to see what value I can extract from it. Um, even just little things like if I see in my data that my incurred amounts, so the losses that come in have gone up, 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 and then they're dropping down, I can go, why is it dropping down? I can go into the database, find the actual claim number, go into the claim system, look and read the claim notes and see what happened and realize that, oh, they initially put you know, a $300,000 reserve on this claim, and then they realized that there was no coverage on the claim, and so they took it down, and that's why my losses are going down. So I think there is real value in being able to query the data and figure it out. And right now, I'm just trying to figure out how much value I can extract from these databases, what analyses I can do. My boss is super duper cool and gives me a ton of freedom to learn. I've spent a lot of this year just opening random files, playing in the databases, trying to build the foundation, trying to plant the seeds so that I can learn as much as possible about the department, about what's going on, such that next year I can really let it bloom. One of my goals for next year is really to make a ton of connections. I've met with some people in the underwriting side about some of the lines to understand what are you doing? What kind of business are you writing? What changes are happening? But building those connections is really going to be my goal for next year. Understanding 
what is happening in the claims department, what changes are going on, because the more context that you can put around the numbers, the better you can then extract and fertilize and make everything nice and beautiful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave me questions down below. Subscribe, all the YouTube things. I love you guys. Thank you for calling. You guys make me so happy.